everybody, Ricky here from Connery Meadows Farm. In today's video, we are going to take these big bags of frozen pig fat, also called lard. We're gonna render them down and we're going to turn them into shelf stable jarred lard for you to cook with, to bake with, to make soap with, whatever you'd like, completely shelf stable. We uh, went and picked up our pork from the butcher. And uh, when we get pork, I always ask for the fat. Now, most of you will know when you're asking for lard or fat from a pig, um, it's coming from the kidney area because that's like the leaf lard. And that's the good fat to cook with. But I ask for all of the fat. Now, why do I ask for all of the fat? Because for soap making, it doesn't actually matter whether it's the leaf lard, the back fat lard, it really makes zero difference in the overall end product in soap. But if you're cooking with it 100%, you want the leaf lard, which is the like the inside by the kidney fat. So I'm gonna show you here in our freezer. We've got all of this. Now this one here, you can see the skin on the outside layer. So this one is the back fat and this one is gonna be my soap making. Like this one here too. There's a nice, uh, you can see here. So this one, this is the layer of the fat. This is the skin here. So this one, you're not gonna wanna eat this one, but there is absolutely nothing wrong with using this one for making soap. So a lot of this, as you can see, this is uh, um, just a lot of fats in here. So the soap stuff, which is this, or the, sorry, this will be the leaf lard, which comes from the kidney. And uh, there's no skin on this one. So that's how I can tell the difference. So these ones will be what I'll be using for eating. And I'm gonna need to trim all of this meat spots off here. Usually, here's another one. These guys, the fat actually looks a lot different uh, than the fat that comes uh, with the skin on it. That's how you can tell. But um, I don't want to waste all this fat. I paid for this pig to be butchered. I don't need to have any of this fat wasted. So I can use all of this. I'm going to grab a couple of these bags out. When I render this down, I render them separately. So the leaf lard gets rendered with the leaf lard. And that gets labeled completely different than when I'm rendering down the, the lard with the skin. It also, the skin lard all gets rendered together. And again, I label that differently when I'm done so that I know which ones I'm going to eat and which ones I'm going to make soap with. So today I'm going to pull out one of these big, big bags here. Actually, I'm going to pull a couple of them out. I'm going to let them thaw a bit before we're going to go ahead and render them down. Because um, as you can see, this is all the fat from the pigs. So I need to get this all rendered down. So I'm gonna need this freezer space for when our chickens are ready to be processed. So I got my work cut out for me. So you can see here, this is one with the skin on it and it is still semi-frozen. I'm using a very, very good Henkel paring knife. It is imperative that you use a very, very good sharp knife. And then what I do is I just cut it into cubes. Now you could ask your butcher to grind the fat for you and it will go a lot faster, but um, it costs a little bit more money as well. And I find that it doesn't really take me all that much time just to let it semi thaw and then cut it all into nice little cubes and you can see with a good knife good sharp knife it really doesn't take me a whole lot of time so there's a few ways you can render this fat down um so you can render it down in a heavy bottom pot which is what we're going to be doing today this is our lake cruise pot so that's what we're going to be using today you can render it down in a bigger pot. You can render it down in a crock pot on the low or warm setting. 
I do find with the crock pot, it just takes way more time than I'm willing to give it. it takes up valuable counter space, so I don't tend to use that. Um, I do know people that put it in a big roast pan and put it in the oven. So there's many different ways of doing this and none of them are wrong. The biggest important thing to remember when rendering down any animal fats is low and slow. You don't wanna put that puppy up on a boil. You don't wanna crisp it. We're going very, very low, very, very slow. Normally on my stove, I render down on this element because it is actually a double element. So like there's a bigger element on the outside and a smaller element on the inside. But right now I'm making cheese and I need that smaller element for the cheese. So I'm gonna pop it back on this next smallest one I have. And again, I'm going to go low, like basically I am going to the lowest setting I can put it at. Now I know that lid doesn't fit properly, but that's just to kind of hold the heat in a little bit better. Now, when I render fats down, I use this much water, big fat, zero water. Why do I use zero water? If you add water to your fats to render it down, then when you jar it up, you have a higher chance of it turning into mold and going bad and rancid. So this is called dry rendering. And this is the way I do it so that it's shelf stable. I have lard on my shelf in jars, which you'll see the whole process, that is five, six years old. And when I open it, it is as clean and as good as the day as I jarred it up because there's no water added. So if you're looking to do tallow, which is um, fat from a cow, a deer, a buffalo, uh, any of those, the process is exactly the same. I dry render everything. Now, there will, people, there will be people out there that tell you, you need to clean your fats and they use water for that process. If you choose to do that process, which I'm not gonna show you because that's not how I do it, if you choose to clean your fats and do that process instead of just filtering it really, really well, then you will need to freeze it. It will never be shelf stable. So I have freezer space at a premium. My shelf space is at a premium too, but not as premium as my freezer space. So I dry render everything. So all of my fats so that they are shelf stable. I don't know if you guys can hear that. I'm hearing my first bit of snapping and crackling and popping. So once that becomes a steady snap, crackle, pop sound, I will grab a wooden spoon and I will push this down so that more of the fat is in contact with the bottom of this pot. And then slowly as this melts down, don't worry, this heat will disappear and it will slowly start to go down. But that's another reason why I put the lid on so that um, heaviness of the lid can keep pushing the fat down. Can you hear it? Snappy, snappy. Oh. Lost a piece. You can see I have a lid on now. So I just want to keep the weight on just another smidge until the lid goes flat, and then I'll start stirring it a little bit better. jar up. I have my jars here ready to go. I prefer the wide mouth jars um, for the simple fact that when I'm scooping out for soaps and stuff, it's easier to get into these jars. I'm just gonna 
go ahead and carefully move stuff around in this pot. Be very careful. This stuff when it spits, whoop, I have to grab that. it hurts. So just be really careful working with it. At this stage of the cooking, when I can really start to see that it's starting to render down and there's a lot of steam coming off, I leave the lid off so that steam can go away so that we are not collecting moisture in with it. I'm going to show you how I set up my jars because we are going to filter straight into this jar. So I have a stainless steel filter. I got this at our little hardware store. Um, I, this is the same one I use for canning as well. And then I have this cloth and I have some stainless steel clothespins. Um, this cloth is called uh, J cloths. So that's what I'll use and I'll set it up and show you how I do that. Okay, so we're gonna put that on there. And then this cloth, I usually just will take, depending on how big it is, like this is one sheet and it's pretty thin. If it was a bigger sheet, I would just leave it as a single, but I rip it off. So now it is two ply, basically. And then I'm going to add it to our top here. Now, because our top, obviously this isn't going to stay. So these are stainless steel clothespins. And I'm going to use them to hold my cloth in place. Now, the next thing I do is strainer just a normal kind of little strainer and then also add that and the reason I do that is because then any big bits get stuck into this and I can pour them back in and then this catches all the smaller little bits all right so the other thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put one of the J cloths on the counter one because it gets really dirty on the counter but two when you're putting hot liquid into a jar, you do want some sort of buffer between your jar and the counter, because what could happen is you could end up with this shattering because this liquid is gonna be super hot going into this glass jar. So we have our strainer, and then I also have a little stainless steel scoopy thing. Now you'll see in here, there's already some liquid. Let's see, bring you up close. So you see here, there's this liquid. This is the liquid that we're gonna be straining into our jar. So we're just gonna gently push down and you can see how full this is getting. So this is important that I start straining it off now, actually. I'm just gonna bring my jar a little bit closer here and I'm gonna use all these utensils here to balance that a little bit. But and then I'm just gonna pour this into our jar. Now these jars have been sterilized earlier today and completely dried. Again, with that hole, we don't want any water left in them. So while well, they're not hot right now and they're probably not what you would consider completely sterilized, and remember that the fat from this is super, super hot. So any sterilization that's needing to be done is done. And that is why I have that little guy there because sometimes little fat bits still get in there. So we're just gonna fill this jar up and then we'll be able to put a lid on it while we're waiting for this to render down again. So you can see in there, we're slowly losing some of the liquid. So we're just gonna keep straining this down. I'm gonna go ahead and finish filling this jar. And as you can see, 
some of the fat bits come up. Like I said, that's what that second strainer is there for. It's not a big deal. And just like in regular canning, we're going to leave at half an inch headspace. So we just flip those fat pieces back. We transfer our funnel over, wipe down our rim and put our lids on. And then because this is very hot, I handle it with a glove. And then we just set it where it will be undisturbed for 24 hours and go ahead and stir. Now, <clears throat> You can see we're slowly boiling down again. You do need to make sure that you keep stirring this. Let's just drop some. Because um, the fact that you took a whole bunch of oil out means that it is going to be more likely to stick to the bottom of the pot. So make sure you're stirring it, scraping any off that stuck to the bottom. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take another round of oil off here. It's not going to be enough to fill my jar back here, but um, I just want to get some more of this oil off because what happens is it starts to spit everywhere and it starts to make a bit of a mess. Now, most of the time when you see lard, you see that it's white. And um, what you're seeing as it goes into the jar is it's more like a creamy kind of color. And don't worry, as it solidifies, it will go white. This is just the stage when it is still really hot. Only about half the jar is full. Um, there's not a lot of oil left in the bottom. I don't want to completely take all the oil out because that will make it stick to the bottom even more. So the one thing that's making it stick to the bottom is the skin. So that's why. I'll just that's why we do this with that. So I don't have to worry about it so much pop it back in and don't worry this in here will stay hot enough until I um, am ready to scoop some more off so basically stir scoop stir scoop until this is full we put the lid on and then we let it solidify sorry the lighting makes this look really weird in color but you can see that it's no longer clear it's starting to get really cloudy in the back and again, as this uh, cools down, it will go white. You do not pressure can or water bath can this. It's literally just called open kettle canning. So you're literally taking it from the pot. You're putting it in the jar. You're putting your sterilized lids on. You're screwing the cap down. You're moving it and then you're not touching it for 24 hours and it will self seal and be shelf stable. So you can see here, um, it is like a creamy kind of color. It will go more white like that, but I'm going to just have it bubbling away in here. You hear it popping. So I just got to keep stirring that. see we're almost to where you want to fill for canning so I leave um, an inch to half an inch headspace just like you would with any other canning I'm 
I'm just going to shove this out of the way so you guys can see for a second. So this has hot water on it. I'm just going to, just like with canning, we're going to clean that lip. Grab our lid and our ring and hang on to the jar. It is really hot. And then I'm going to go put this with the other jar. And that's it. We just uh, keep working at it. Now you can see we've rendered it down quite significantly, but there's still some white bits in there. So this is where I take a potato masher and I mash it down really, really well because those white bits are still the bits of fat that will turn into lard. The brown bits are actually the skin bits and they won't turn into lard. So now you can see I'm scooping the brown bits and then I'm putting them into the wire strainer and then I'm pushing it down with my wooden spoon. Now I threw the brown ones back in because it wasn't fully rendered. But now we're going to go ahead. We're going to start scooping into the wire strainer, pushing it down with my spoon to get all liquid out. And it's very sticky because that's the skin sticking. And then it goes into a little uh, bowl. You can see here the lard at all the different stages and uh, which one we did first on the left to the right. This is the next morning. Everything, look how nice and white that is. Beautiful, all solidified up. And this is 100% shelf stable, all sealed. We did the back fat. I'm gonna do the leaf lard. And I'm going to show you how to do this in the crock pot because some of you may feel a lot more comfortable doing it in the crock pot. So for learning, this is what we're gonna do. So it's usually, this one's been cut, but it's usually like, looks like that. And then there's like another side to it. So we kind of like that. Um, it's a lot softer of a fat than the uh, one with the skin. So let me just point you down in the right direction here, and then we'll talk about what you're gonna see while I'm cutting it. So my, my crock pot over here, it's not on yet. But, so the one thing that I am going to do, I'm using the same knife, is for this one, and you can see how much easier this is to cut. I am going to take the time and the effort to take this off because this is the fat that you want to use for baking and cooking. And you don't want any meaty kind of flavor left to it. So we're going to spend some time and we're just going to shave this little bit of meat here off. And my dogs will really like this. Now you're not gonna probably get all the meat bits off, but try to get as much as you can. Just so you know, when you're making an apple pie, you don't have a meaty flavor to it. Then we're just going to go ahead, just like the other one, we're going to cut this up and we're going to put it in the crock pots. Now, if you're picking this up from your butcher, you can actually ask them to grind this for you, and then you won't have to do this step. Um, it will cost you a little bit more to ask them to grind it, 
but it might save you a little bit of time and you will actually get a little bit better of a render. Um, but I get so much of the uh, fat that I don't really worry about that that much. Just like our pot on the stove, this is pretty full. So we're actually gonna do the same thing. We're gonna squish our lid down and we are going to put this on warm or low, depending on what setting that you have for your crock pot, so warm or low. And then we're just gonna leave this until I start to see it cooking. Then we're gonna take the lid off just like the other one so that the uh, moisture can disappear. But to start, we're going to leave it like that and just let it go. At this point, you can see that the fat on the outside edges is starting to go translucent. That means that it's starting to cook down. And just like the one on the stove, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stir it all together and just keep stirring it lid on, lid off, and periodically come back and stir. And you can really see the difference in the ones um, on the outside edge versus the ones in the middle. And then I do keep the lid kind of sideways on the crock pot for a bit and that way the steam can escape and then just like we did with the one on the stove we're going to go ahead and we're going to just start filling our jars and you can see I'm really working to make sure that my jars are clean on the top so that the lids will seal down and then I go ahead and I put it in a different section than the other ones so I know which ones are which so it can cool down. And we go straight back to scooping and uh, putting into the jars. Now, the other thing that you'll notice is that um, there's not so much brown uh, bits in this one. It also doesn't stick as much. And it's not because it's in a crock pot. It's simply because there is no skin on this one. Because remember, this is the leaf lard one, so it's near the kidney. And so there's no skin there. Now, just like the one on the stove, we're going to take the potato masher to it and we're going to mash it down because those smaller bits do cook down better, which is why you can see I don't feel the need to have this uh, ground up. I am quite capable of doing this myself. And um, again, at the very end, we're going to do the same thing that we did with the other one is we're going to squish the fat out and then we will put it in a separate container. Sometimes I pop it back in if I'm just trying to top up a jar. And then for the next bits, you'll see me squish it out into the jar. And eventually, when I feel that I have enough that I can squish out, then those bits will, instead of going back into the um, crock pot, once I feel that I've really rendered them down enough, then those bits will go into a bowl and um, they're called cracklins. Some people eat them, we don't. So real quick over here where they're sitting, the one I'm pointing to is the one that we're just rendering right now. So it is still very liquid. And then the one on the left is one that's already solidified. And you can see, yes, they're tan when they go in liquid, but they do solidify up to white. Now this next little bit I'm going to show you is two different colors. So the one on the left is the leaf lard and the one on the right has leaf lard on the bottom, but uh, fat, back fat on the top. And you can see that there is a little bit of a color difference. So sometimes when I'm rendering two different kinds of lard um, and I need to top a jar up, I'll top it up with the other one. So that particular jar that I'm pointing to will become for soap only, not for eating. All right, so I want to show you guys, I'm standing in my cellar right now, and I want you to show you up here on this top shelf right here, this and that box, and then there's a few other places in this cellar that I have all of these jars of lard. Um, so some of the lard in here I've had in jars for five plus years. Really, this is the best way that I find to keep my lard um, and keep it long term without taking up freezer space. Freezer space at our house is a premium, so I don't leave it 
in its fat form in the bags in the freezer for a very long period of time. I usually try to get it up into this as quickly as I can. Now, I do also have them in another location. I just wanted to show you that's that's what I do. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us as we turned raw fat into usable rendered down lard. We'll see you next time on the farm.